This is a story of inspiration, of the overcoming love and forgiveness of Jesus Christ, despite unimaginable brutality and oppression. It's the testimony of the Karen people of Burma. Do you see the sunrise coming up from over the hills? Do you feel the morning breeze chilling through the new soul? Hear me, child of grace. Did you think you'd always be safe? Vision Beyond Borders is working to make a difference in the lives of the Karen people. Founder Patrick Klein has been involved in missions work for over 20 years, delivering Bibles to areas where Christians are being persecuted for their faith in Jesus Christ. We travel throughout the country distributing literature to reach our brothers and sisters. But over the years, I've met many tribal pastors and pastors who have suffered for their faith in Jesus Christ. And their cry is, bring us more Bibles. We're desperate for Bibles. Bring us Bibles, bring us discipleship materials. And I believe we have an opportunity to help our brothers and sisters, to give them the tools so that they can be successful in their ministries to reach their country with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Patrick soon realized, along with meeting spiritual needs, there were also immediate physical needs. Vision Beyond Borders has been building orphanages, equipping workers, providing food, clothes, and medical supplies to this area, all in the name of Jesus Christ. Located in Southeast Asia between Thailand and Bangladesh, Burma, now known as Myanmar, broke away from British rule in 1949. Over 50 million Burmese are now under the firm rule of a brutal military dictatorship which has been in place since 1962. A Burmese regime that spends less than 1% of its um, gross national product on education, less than 1% on health, but about 40 plus percent on the military. They have about 400,000 soldiers that they use to dominate and impose fear on all the different ethnic groups in Burma, not just the Karen, but the Burman people, obviously we've seen them hugely oppressed, but also the Chin, the Kachin, the Arakan, the Shan, all these different ethnic groups are oppressed by this military machine, with any dissent or rebellion completely crushed. I think maybe a lot of people have heard of Aung San Suu Kyi, the, the brave pro-democracy leader of the National League for Democracy, the Nobel Prize winner. Aung San Suu Kyi is actually half Karen. Being half Karen is a real problem because the Karen have never really submitted to the Burmese government. The Karen have never surrendered their weapons, and so the Karen are continually seen as a threat to the ability of the, the Burman ethnic group and the, particularly the, the Burma army to control. Its big concern is having lots of different fractured groups within uh, Burman society and they want to make it one Burman ethnic nation. Ethnic cleansing, in other words, killing undesirable races, is focused on indigenous tribal groups and many of them are also Christians. 40% of the Karen are Christians, 80 or 90% of the Chin and the Kachin are Christians, and yet they're widely ignored by the church and they're widely ignored by the world in general. The Burmese military does not want the outside world to know what's going on, and they don't want them to bring help, aid to these people who are being killed in the villages. So missionaries who work in these areas, their lives are in danger. They also have to face disease, landmines, rockets coming in at any time and even being shot at by soldiers. Do you remember the horrific images of Cyclone Nargis? The world was shocked by the calculated, cold treatment of the people. They were simply left in southern Burma with no help, as high winds and flooding left over 300,000 dead, almost three million homeless, wiped out entire families and completely destroyed villages. The government simply turned its back, refusing all outside help. The Burmese government is opposed to Christian missionaries, tries to restrict their movements, and wants to control all aid coming into the country. Any foreign aid that comes into Burma is seized by the government and is used at their discretion. 
Between 2006 and 2008, a massive government attack decimated the Karen resistance. Over 3,000 villages were burned to the ground, forcing people to flee across the river to Thailand. The situation there has been appalling as the Karen have been hunted down by the Burma army in a campaign to dominate and control and some say actually destroyed the actual fabric of Karen society. It's not a, a massive Rwanda-like genocide where we saw hundreds of thousands of people wiped out in a matter of days. But here is a slow control with thousands each year being killed, but not in a kind of massive eye-catching way. Patrick and his team recently traveled deep into the jungles of northern Thailand, bringing supplies to several of the refugee camps located just outside of Burma. We've just traveled from Chiang Mai up to Mae Hong Song. Tomorrow we'll actually go to the refugee camps. We've heard that there's over half a million refugees now in Thailand. They're allowing the women and the children to stay and keeping the men in Burma. The plan is that they will all be killed. All the men will be killed by the Burmese military and then they will send the women and children back in with no one to defend them and they'll be slaughtered as well. Pastor and his wife, Rosebell, run this church and the Bible school, and they also do a lot of outreach to the Karen refugees coming out of Burma. Rosebell comes from Burma. She felt like God had told her one day she would have an orphanage, but she didn't know when, and all of a sudden, people started giving children to her. We care for the orphans, and then because of we love the children, and we love the widows who cannot help themselves, the only things that we can help our people in front line, inside Burma, in the jungles, is just only pray. Because the people now have no clothes, no food, so we try to help them. We're seeing a dedication in the hearts of these people to help their own. We ask for favor, authority, and Father, that you just lead us and just direct our steps. We love We're going by truck because we need four-wheel drive to go into these village areas. During the rainy season, it would take seven hours to get up there. Thankfully, it's not the rainy season. It's only going to take us two and a half hours. These people are illegally here in Thailand. They're considered internally displaced people. They do not have visas to stay here. They cannot work here. They cannot get medical attention. They cannot attend school here. But these people have no other place to go. They have come from Burma at great risk of their own lives. But if they were to go back into Burma, they would definitely be killed or put to work as porters and slaves by the Burmese military. The Burmese soldiers surround villages. They lob rockets into those villages. If anyone runs out, the Burmese soldiers shoot them. And the government goes in, they shoot who's ever left alive and burn the evidence. I saw the soldiers come to the village many times. We would run into the jungle and hide, and they would shoot at us. The soldiers would surround our villages with landmines, so we could not run away. One day, the Burmese soldiers came back, tied me up, and forced me to go with them. They made me a porter. At night, they tied me to a post, and the ants would bite me. If we refused to be porters, they would shoot and kill us at once, because they said we were their enemies. One time, they beat on my head, and then punched me with a gun. They told me if I ran away, they would kill me. They make the people carry weapons, rice, heavy things. Some people fall down and die after only a month of being a porter. The women are afraid of being raped. When the soldiers came near my house, I jumped out the window even though I was three months pregnant. I ran away as fast as I could. I lost a child I was carrying.
we saw some women, some girls, raped by the soldiers, and then they cannot live, and then they got something like broken hearted or scars inside. The only things that we can help them is share Jesus to them, so Jesus Christ will heal their inner heart. The Burmese soldiers plant landmines around some villages, and so the people are starved to death as they cannot go out to their fields to get rice or vegetables. The Burmese soldiers came to our village. We had to run away and sleep in the jungle. One of my older brothers stepped on a landmine near our village and died. He was 18 years old. In Burma site is a lot of landmines. If you ask me to go to Burma site in the border area now, I'm very afraid to cross the river to there. One young man we interviewed goes back in to get food into his family and, and others in the village to keep them alive. We were walking behind the cow and the cow stepped on the landmine and blew up and killed the cow. Uh, this cow, yeah? So God protect you. Yeah, God, God be with me. Yes. Although the people are grateful to be in Thailand, they're far from being safe. In the camps, clean water is scarce. There's no electricity and health care is minimal. The camps are located near the river, and mosquito-borne diseases such as malaria and dengue fever are common. Unfortunately, the simple medicines to treat these diseases are not. Children are especially vulnerable to disease, and the hardships related to being relocated, such as not enough food, water, and medical treatment. Death is a common occurrence. Each person in this camp has his own personal tragedy and it's just good that they, they know Jesus, you know, because without Jesus, hopeless. There's no hope, absolutely no hope for the current people, but they hold on very strong to their faith in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. We're here in northern Thailand. This is at the KT Orphanage. We're just a couple miles inside the Thai border from the Burma side. These 86 kids came a couple months ago from Burma. They were being shot at as they were coming to safety here in Thailand. They're illegally here in Thailand. They've been put in this orphanage, which people have provided for in the States. There's several buildings, um, the main church building, and then there's several dormitories. These are very simple places to live, but it's a safe place. They're not worried about the soldiers coming from Burma all the way in this far inland. So this is a safe haven for these kids. But every day, the Thai soldiers from the border guard come and harass these children and threaten to send these children back to Burma. Many of their parents have been killed by the Burmese soldiers back in Burma. Benjamin is about seven years old. Both of his parents died when he was only two. Villagers say that his father was shot by the Burmese soldiers. His body was lit on fire, and what was left of the body was eaten by pigs. A man from the village found Benjamin and took him off into the jungle. This brother and sister are all that remain of their family. Both their parents are now dead. Their father was killed by Burmese soldiers after they found out that he was warning the Korean people about them. When we saw the other villagers leave, we followed them. He took us six days to walk here from our village. This little boy's mother was very sick and she was taken out to the field by the soldiers and gang raped and then they killed her. After the father found out what happened to his wife, the man lost his mind, and so the kids were put into separate camps. The family all split up. He still has hope, faith in Jesus Christ, and the loving care and compassion found here in this little bamboo orphanage gives them all hope. When I read my Bibles, I'm happy. And then I see the pictures and I understand why Jesus loved.
It's amazing to see what God has done in the lives of these people. People are very kind, smile a lot, and very gentle spirited. We've been in the church services here and the Kren really love music and they love to worship God and so to see these young people just worship the Lord, it's really exciting. These people do not harbor bitterness, but instead they pray for those that have killed their family members. Help us to remember you always, every day. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I'm thankful for what I have in America, but it's easy for me to take it for granted. Every time we go to refugee camps, it's a life-changing experience, especially when I see how these orphans and the people in the refugee camps live. You can hear the kids in the background singing. They really love the Lord here, and it's a joy to be able to come and visit these kids and to see what God is doing in their lives. When they worship the Lord, they raise their hands, their eyes are closed. They just concentrate on the Lord and they serve the Lord out of a pure heart without any distractions. Young children literally wake at four in the morning to read their Bibles and pray for their oppressors. They pray every day for the soldiers who killed their parents, that the soldiers would repent and put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ alone. The team once saw an armed border guard, in an attempt to frighten these young orphans, circle the children while they attended the small bamboo church. With circumstances that could only be created by the greatness of God, they saw these children actually ministering to their oppressors through their faithful worship of a God who loves them. We would see these kids, some of them with their hands raised, their eyes closed, for 45 minutes to an hour just shut in with Jesus. And we know that God is at work healing their broken hearts and ministering to them and giving them hope in the midst of a hopeless situation. Do you love Jesus? Yes. A little bit or a whole bunch? These children are a living example of the complete restoring love and forgiveness of Jesus Christ. They're living out the Christian life right in front of us and knowing what it means to forgive those that have persecuted them. The man that we interviewed who lost his hands and his eyes said that he was very bitter, but when he trusted Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior, all the bitterness drained away and he had a love for the Burmese soldiers. He is now an evangelist and he travels through the villages preaching the gospel and trying to share the good news of Jesus Christ after I stepped on the landmine, the Karen leaders took me to the hospital. I was there for many months. At that time, I was very sad and wanted to kill myself. But then I accepted Jesus and he said that I could live without my eyes. I tell other people, after I lost my hands and eyesight, I wanted to take my life. But after I found Jesus, I wanted to live and tell others about him. Jesus is my strength. He gave me salvation, eternal life. I see what Jesus Christ has done to them and has given them peace and joy and love. And I'm challenged in my walk with God to be more and more sold out for Jesus Christ, but also to do all I can to help them. Please pray for the Karen people. We do not have freedom here. Please pray for our country, Burma, that there will be peace, that there will be freedom that we will be able to go back to our country and villages and praise God in a big voice. Maybe God has touched your heart and moved on you to help us. We need people to come and help us carry supplies, to go into the refugee camps, to minister to our brothers and sisters. We need financial support so that we can buy the medicine, that we can buy food and, and bring clothes and supplies to these people in need. We also need prayer because we know that prayer is what opens the door, and prayer is what changes people. Pray for the nation of Burma, the Karen and other tribal people, that they will be free to return to their country 
and rebuild their homes and villages. Join us in praising the Lord for their strength and their testimony of faith. They have a very simple, true, and pure devotion to the Lord, despite their circumstances, and a desire to follow Him no matter what the cost. These people know something of the peace and comfort of the Lord that you and I can only imagine. May we seek opportunities to bear their burdens as Christ has called us to do. Consider having the children of your church send gifts to the children in Burma. Gift packs containing simple items like a comb, a toothbrush, a mirror, and a toy, along with a commitment to pray for them. Let's help our children become active ministers of their faith. We put together a 30-day prayer guide for the country of Burma. If you would like one of these prayer guides, please contact us. Our website is www.visionbeyondborders.org. Please organize a prayer meeting in your church. Get your friends to pray. I believe that as we pray, God will work and God will change the country of Burma. You can help make a difference in this country for eternity. Promise you, and every time I look ahead, my heart aches.